Welcome to Supply Chain. In this chapter, we are going to talk about network design. And by now, you already listened to the lecture on distribution channels, the different kinds of distribution. You have looked at the math models uh, which we have uh, created. And now we're going to talk about why network design is so important and how we are going to use those math models you have learned in a network design situation. So let's look at what network design decisions involve. We the supply chain network design decisions include assignment of facility role, what role should each facility play, what processes are performed at each facility. Uh, we have to look at the location where these facilities should be located. We have to look at how much capacity should be allocated to each facility. And finally, what markets should each facility serve and which supply source should feed which facility. So let's look at some of the factors that influence network design. The first one is strategic factors. A firm's competitive strategy has significant impact on network design decisions within a supply chain. Firms that focus on cost leadership tend to find the lowest cost location for their manufacturing facilities, even if it means locating far from the markets they serve. Electronic manufacturing service providers such as Foxconn and Flextronics have been successful in providing low-cost electronics assembly by locating their factories in low-cost countries such as China. In contrast, firms that focus on responsiveness tend to locate facilities closer to the market and may end up selecting a high-cost location if the choice allows the firm to react quickly to changing needs. Zara, the Spanish apparel manufacturer, has a large fraction of its production capacity in Portugal and Spain, despite higher costs there. The local capacity allows the company to respond quickly to changing fashion trends in Europe. Next, we look at technological factors. Characteristics of available production technologies have significant impact on network design. If production technology displays significant economies of scale, a few high capacity locations are most effective. This is the case in the manufacture of computer chips for which factories require a large investment and the output is relatively inexpensive to transport. In contrast, if facilities have lower fixed costs, many facilities are preferred because this helps lower transportation costs. So for example, bottling plants of Coca-Cola do not have high fixed costs. To reduce transportation costs, Coca-Cola sets up many bottling plants all over the world and each serving the local market. Then there are macroeconomic factors such as taxes, tariffs, exchange rates, and shipping costs that are not in the control of an individual firm. As global trade has increased, macroeconomic factors have significant influence on success and failure of supply chain. So here are some of the issues. We talked about taxes and tariffs. Uh, and tariffs have a strong influence on location decision within a supply chain. If a country has high tariff, companies do not serve the local market, either do not serve the more local market or set up manufacturing plants within the country to save duties. High tariffs lead to more production location within a supply chain network, with each location having a lower allocated capacity. So you can kind of see how this will increase your costs. Tax incentives, on the other hand, are a reduction in tariffs and taxes that countries, states, and cities often provide to encourage firms to locate their facilities in that area. Developing countries often create free trade zones in which duties and tariffs are relaxed as long as production is primarily used for export. 
Then there is the exchange rate and demand risk. Fluctuations in exchange rates are common and have significant impact on the profit of any supply chain serving global markets. So for example, dollar fluctuated between a high of 124 yen in 2007 to a low of 81 yen in 2010. A firm that sells its products in the United States with production in Japan is exposed to the risk of appreciating yen. So cost of production is incurred in yen, whereas revenues are updated in dollars, and therefore increase in value of yen increase the production costs and decreases the firm's profits. Finally, there's fuel and freight costs. Fluctuations in freight and fuel costs have significant impact on the profits of supply chain. So for example, Baltic Dry Index, which measures changes in the cost of transporting raw materials such as metals, grains, and fossil fuels, peaked at 4187 at May and hit a low of 1709 in July. Crude prices have fluctuated between 2009 and 2010 from $31 per barrel to increase of $90 per barrel within a year and a half. It can be difficult to deal with the extent in price fluctuation, even with supply chain flexibility. Now we have political factors. So political stability of a country under consideration plays a significant role in location of choice. So if there is going to be a revolution and overthrow of the government, you may not want to locate your facility there because that results in serious shocks and disruptions in supply chain. Then there are infrastructure uh, factors. Just, you know, remember we talked about tax incentives and low taxes, but if you have low taxes and poor infrastructure, that adds the cost of doing business at a given location. So in 1990s, when global companies located their factories in China near Shanghai or Tianjin, even though locations didn't have, and, and they did that even though locations didn't have the lowest labor or land cost because they had good infrastructure. This includes roads, it includes, it could be a rail service, transportation, terminals, proximity to airports, seaways, highway access, congestion, local utilities, etc. Then there are competitive factors where a firm must consider a competitive strategy, size and location when designing the supply chain network. So this could come in positive externalities between firms, where this occur when there is co-location of multiple firms benefits all of them. Positive externalities lead to competitors locating close to each other. For example, retail stores tend to locate close to each other because doing so increases overall demand, thus benefiting all parties. While locating together in a mall, competing retail store make it more convenient for customers who need drive to only one location to find everything they need. Then there is locating to split the market. This happens when there is no positive externalities. Firms locate to be able to capture the largest possible market share. And we'll talk about this with a mathematical model a little bit later. Then there is customer response time and local presence. Firms that target customers who value a short response time must locate close to them. Customers are unlikely to come to a convenience store if they have to travel long distance to get there. It is therefore best for a convenience store chain to have many stores distributed in an area that most people have a convenience store close to them. And finally, we talk about logistics and facility costs. These are incurred within a supply chain uh, as the supply within a supply chain change as the number of facilities, their location and capacity allocation change. Company must consider inventory, transportation, and facility costs when designing their supply chain network. Inventory and facility cost increases as the number of facilities in a supply chain increases. Transportation cost decreases as the number of facility increases. If the number of facilities increase to the point at which inbound economies of scale are lost, then transportation costs increase. So let's look at the competitive 
factors here. We talked about positive externalities where co-location benefits everybody. And um, example is retail. We talked about an example of retail stores, uh, which locate each other, locating in a mall. Um, the example, another example of positive externalities occurs when the presence of a competitor leads to the development of appropriate infrastructure in the developing area. So if you have a huge auto manufacturer which comes in and it builds that infrastructure, it might help um, other competitors and, and that makes it easier to locate next to it. And here when you, is an example, uh, when we are trying to capture splitting a market. So take this example here, two firms are locating on a line, right? And we have demand for company one would be A, right? The company one is right here. Company two is right here. This is A. This is the demand up to this point. And all the customers here will go to this company. They are not going to go to this company because we are assuming they're going to go to the closest location. Everybody in this side will go here. That's B. So this here is 1 minus B, right? So the number of customers between these two lines is 1 minus B minus A. And we can say half the customers go to A, and other half go to B. So demand for one would be A plus one minus B minus A divided by two. Demand for company two would be B plus one minus B minus A divided by two. That gives you one plus B minus A. And both firms maximize their profit if they end up in the same place at exactly at the center. So by trying to get more customers, A moves this way, sorry, company one moves to the right and company two moves to the left and they both end up in the same place, okay? So let's look at the framework for network design. So let's look at phase one. Phase one is supply chain strategy and that contains competitive strategy. It has the internal constraints just capital growth strategy existing network it looks at the global competition and this then leads to phase two which is your regional facility conf configuration this has your production technologies the cost scale impact support flexibility your competitive environment your aggregate factor and logistics costs tariffs incentives regional demand political exchange demand risk all of this come in phase two and then you move to phase three, which looks at the desirable sites, and you look at production methods, skill needs, response time, available infrastructure. And finally, phase four, which is location cost, the, their logistics costs, factor costs all come into play here. So to repeat this, phase one was define a supply chain strategy or design. You need a clear definition of the firm's competitive strategy forecast the likely evolution of the global competition, identify constraints on available capital, determine a growth strategy. Phase two was defining the regional facility configuration, your forecast of the demand by country or region, economies of scale and scope. We identified demand risk, exchange rate risk, political risk, tariffs, requirements for local production, tax incentives, exports or import restriction, and you have to identify your competitors. Phase three is selecting the set of desirable potential sites. You'll focus on hard infrastructure requirements, soft infrastructure requirements. And finally, you come to the location choice where you're looking at factor costs and logistics costs. So now we are going to look at models for facility location and capacity allocation. In this focus, the focus is to maximize the overall profitability of supply chain network while providing customers appropriate responsiveness. There are many trade-offs made during network design. 
For example, building many facilities to serve local market reduces transportation costs and provides fast response time, but it will increase your facility and inventory costs occurred by the firm. Network design models used to decide on locations and capacity to assign current demand to facility. And these actually are managers must make this decision considering a time horizon over which locations and cap and capacities will not be altered over years. Now, the second part is that these models are used to assign current cap current demand to available facilities and identify lanes which products will be transported. Managers must consider this decision at least on an annual basis as demand price, exchange rates, and tariffs change. So here are all the information ideally available to make a design decision. You need location of supply sources and markets, location of potential facility sites, demand forecast by market, facility labor and material cost by site, transportation costs between each pair of sites, inventory cost by site and a function of quantity, sales price of the product, taxes and tariffs, and desired response times and other factors. Given this information, either gravity model or network optimization models may be used to design a network. So let's look at how we are going to design a regional network configuration. So the goal is to obtain a regional network configuration while accounting for demand and costs at a regional level. And we did talk about the information needed by region. So we're going to stop, stop at this slide for this lecture. The next lecture is actually going to go into Excel and talk about how we are going to build our network optimization models.